Okay, in this oceanography lecture series, as you can see from the screen, I'm just showing that the ocean is very dynamic, right? It's changing all the time. And then that's reflecting this uh, uh, homepage as well, right? Uh, so in this, you can see the, the solar system with the planets and you can see the Earth here as with all the other planet. So Earth is not an unusual planet. It's just like other planet. But there is one different in a, an Earth. So what is the difference? Right. As once the Arthur C. Clarke said, uh, the, we, we have given a wrong name for the Earth how inappropriate to call this planet Earth when it's clearly the ocean, because why it is the reason is that you see that 70% of the ocean is covered, sorry, the Earth is covered with water and then just 30% of the land, right? And if someone see it from the, the outer outside, the Earth just look like a, a watery planet full of water, so that it could have been called an uh, ocean planet. Um, but unfortunately, we have given a wrong name, right? Now, how much do we know about the Earth? Just to get an idea about that, you can see this, uh, the distance between the Earth and the moon, right? You can see how many kilometers there from uh, Earth to moon. And on your left, you can see the, the deepest point, the known deepest point on our earth, that is the Mariana Trench. Actually, the, the Challenger Deep is the location in the Mariana Trench, we call the Challenger Deep. So that is just 11 kilometers down, 11 kilometers, but how much we know about the moon and how much we know about the, the challenger deep. That is something to, we need to discuss here. Right? We know much better on moon than actually the, the, the challenger deep that is our own earth. Right? That is where the people pay very little attention to the, like, uh, uh, to learn about the ocean. So this is one of the issues. And you can see in this, uh, this is the, the location where the, the Challenger Deep, it is in the Pacific Ocean. As you can see the, here, the, the Australia, New Zealand and on the top. This is the area where the deepest point on earth, right? As you can see here, it is almost 11,000 meters, which means 11 kilometers down, right? Um, right, here I'm giving you an, an comparison. The two set of people, or rather explorers, one group called the astronauts, right? You heard about this, the term astronauts who are dealing with the, the the outer space. But there are another group of people, we less known, they are called aquanauts. Right? Probably you have not even heard about aquanauts, right? This term may be very new for you. Right? But actually the aquanauts started the expeditions, especially in the, the deepest point on earth, that's the Challenger Deep. That was in 1960s. Right. It's well before you and even me, I was born, right? They started this uh, exploration in the Challenger Deep with uh, uh, this type of unique uh, boat and then attached something like this. It's a like a huge iron bowl where two people put inside, actually two naval people put inside that uh, Actually, it's an iron sphere or globe. 
providing the oxygen from the boat, right? You can see the boat here and then to, for them to breathe, the oxygen has to come from the boat because there is no oxygen production inside. So um, with just two people inside in, with a small window for them to see. So they gradually lowered these two people into the deepest point on earth. That was in 1960. So luckily they had no trouble. I mean, there's huge pressure inside, but uh, there were some cracks even in the, the glass where they were looking at, but uh, luckily there was no problem. They could come to the, uh, to the boat again safely, right? So that was 1960 then and a long time after actually the people start going to the moon that was after nine years that was in Apollo. You might have heard about this on the Apollo, uh, Apollo expedition that was in 1969. Um, after nine years of this initial exploration in the ocean, right? But how long does, did it take for a second person to go to the, the deepest point Earth? We know we have been several times to the moon in between, but you know, first the first expedition in 1960, right? The second expedition on 2012. Right? It took more than 60 years for a second right uh, expedition. That second expedition actually by a well-known person. Uh, you might have heard about this name, James Cameron. Alatino ne James Cameron ye. It's well-known filmmaker, especially the scientific uh, fiction, right? Uh, like aliens, right? Gladiator, right? Yeah, Avatar, and then even the Titanic was. Uh, one of his great creations, right? So he's the one who went to the, the deepest point in 2012. It is actually a solo venture. He went alone, no one was there. Right? Which is, um, you can see the, 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 the submersible, we call it the submersible, where he used to go down, right? So he has done a lot of like experiment that he had to control everything got even the samples and, and and he spent a lot of money on the not that expedition anyway, right? Our home. Over the course of history, we've constantly learned more and more about our planet. Humanity's endless curiosity for the unknown has led us to explore the far reaches beyond the horizon. When that wasn't enough, we took to the skies and even ventured beyond it. But there is one place, one place that remains a mystery, a place where darkness brings a new meaning to the word, the ocean. Seventy-two percent of the Earth's surface is covered by water, yet ninety-five percent of the world below the surface remains unexplored. We have better maps of Mars and the Moon than we do of the ocean floor. Nearly fifty percent of all life on Earth is also found in the ocean. But scientists estimate that at the very least a million more aquatic species has yet to be discovered. Which basically means that theoretically, no matter how unlikely or illogical it might be to us now, there is still a chance, a chance, that a talking yellow sponge-like creature is enjoying a delicious crabby patty right as we speak.
If you've ever flown with a commercial airline and tried to look out the window, things will look pretty small, obviously. But keep that distance in mind. Now imagine that you're on a boat and instead of seeing the ground from high up in the air, you see the ocean floor from the surface of what your deep is of almost 11,000 meters. It's the lowest known point in the ocean. The most amazing thing though is that we have been there. Humans have actually touched the bottom of this place. And not only that, we did it in 1960. 1960, that's over 50 years ago now. Humans would not visit again until 52 years later, when in 2012, James Cameron, the famous movie director, actually ventured down to the bottom himself. Marine animals have something called cleaning stations. At these stations, fish, sharks, turtles, like turtles. and other aquatic life congregate to be cleaned by smaller shrimp and fish-like creatures. When the animal approaches the cleaning station, it will open its mouth and position its body in such a way as to signal that it needs cleaning. The cleaner fish will then remove and eat the parasites from the skin and even swim into into the mouth and gills of any fish being cleaned. For decades now, scientists have been tracking a mysterious song heard in the depths of the ocean. The song-like sounds have been identified as belonging to a single male whale trying to communicate with others. The problem is that he produces sounds at a frequency of around 52 Hz, but most other whale species sing at frequencies much lower, between the 15 and 25 Hz range. Thus, his singing goes unnoticed no matter how hard he tries and it's been named the loneliest whale in the world, which coincidentally sounds like a perfect title for a Pixar movie. It's been estimated that roughly 3 million shipwrecks is right now resting at the ocean floor. As they slowly sank beneath the surface, never to be seen again, they carried with them all their cargo, their gold, everything. So as we speak, there are several billions worth of treasures waiting to be found at the bottom of the ocean. In 2012, a video from an oil rig in the Gulf of Mexico spotted a highly unusual and surreal looking creature. It was captured over 1000 meters below the surface, floating around like a sheet or a blanket in the water. The creature was later revealed to actually be a form of a jellyfish, Deepstaria enigmatica to be exact, which is an awesome name by the way. Not much is known about the animal other than that it lives at a depth of between 1000 and 2000 meters. There is something called deep sea gigantism, and it's exactly what the name suggests. It's the tendency for deep sea animals to display a larger size than their smaller, more common relatives. For example, the giant and colossal squid. The colossal is the larger of the two and can grow up to 14 meters long, the average length of a freaking bus. Another example is the Japanese spider crab with a maximum leg span of almost 4 meters. There's also the giant oarfish which can become over 17 meters long and the giant isopod which looks absolutely enormous compared to its smaller relatives. It's not exactly known what is causing the creature's increased size. It could be the result of adaptation for scarcer food, greater pressure, the extreme temperature and complete lack of sunlight or for other unknown reasons. In early 2013, three days after a ship had capsized just outside the coast of Nigeria, a team of divers was sent down to look for the dead bodies of the ship's crew. What they did not expect to find was someone still alive. The ship's cook, Harrison Okine, had in complete darkness survived for three days in a small pocket of air 30 meters below the surface. The only thing he had was a bottle of Coca-Cola. His rescue was also captured on film and has gone quite viral ever since. 
The Bermuda Triangle has long been considered to be a mysterious place with strange paranormal activity. A place where ships and aircrafts alike mysteriously disappear, never to be seen again. This is not the case at all. Officially, the triangle is not even considered to exist. In fact, the Bermuda Triangle has as many disappearances as any other region of the ocean of similar size. And all the supposed mysteries about the place even happened outside of the triangle. The is a big problem all around the world today. Our complete disregard for destroying something that is absolutely is essential for life on this planet is nothing short of astounding. And it's not just about the life in the ocean, it's about life on Earth, humans included. Millions of marine creatures, birds, and terrestrial animals are killed every year as a direct consequence of pollution. In China, over 90% of the water in and around cities is polluted, which should come as a shock to no one as they release around 60 million tons of waste into the ocean every single day. The issue comes down to our inability to account for long-term effects. The fact that what we do now, today, could literally mean life or death in just a few short years. But let's not forget about our pollution of the skies. Global warming has an enormous effect on the oceans as well. About 30 to 40 percent of the carbon dioxide we release into the atmosphere dissolves into the ocean, rivers and lakes. It reacts with the water to form carbonic acid and starts a process called ocean acidification where slowly but increasingly turning our oceans into acid. Let me say that again just to let you know how moronic this really is. We are knowingly, knowingly destroying something that is crucial to our survival and probably the reason we even exist in the first place by turning it into fucking acid. Hari, um, I think uh, you enjoyed that video. I hope you can hear me. Oh, hang on, eh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Okay, I'm going to go. 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 Okay. So that video actually gave you some, some sort of overall uh, perspective or idea about what are we going to learn in this uh, lecture series, right? From uh, the beauty of the ocean, or oh, it's uh, unique things with the ocean, and and as well as the the what is the situation with the ocean, or the, the importance of the ocean, as well as the present situation and how the ocean would be in the future. Right? So that that video gave some sort of overall. Uh, perspective right so oceanography the term oceanography sometimes some people use as the marine science as well but uh, it's not the same thing but i will explain later on uh, these terms uh, not very wrong to call it as marine science as well as but uh, uh, the marine science is a little bit more uh, the complicated then the oceanography is oceanography is very clear what you learn in the ocean, but marine science will be uh, there are more other things to combine, right? So very simply, the oceanography is the scientific scientific study of the ocean. Right? But here we learn different aspects of the oceanography, and then together with the history and also the uh, the present situation and 
as well as how would be the ocean in the future. That's what we're going to learn. Uh, basically, the, there are four disciplines in the oceanography, I think four main disciplines. One of the disciplines we call the physical oceanography. Physical oceanography, where you will study about the waves, the tides, right, that the currents, and the, the ocean energy, how the ocean water move, something like that, the physical features of the ocean. Right? The next thing we'll learn a little bit on the geological oceanography, like the, the how the, the ocean is formed and what is the content, what is in the bottom, what kind of things you can see there. And then how we can study about then what are the methods to study about the ocean bottom because we can't see anything from the above or from the boat. So how are we going to study about the ocean, ocean floor, right? How it is formed, right? So this is these are the things that you're going to learn in geological oceanography. And the third one is a chemical oceanography. Uh, we will be talking about the 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 ocean chemistry or the composition of a, and also the properties of seawater and how the seawater is moved and mixed and then what are the chemical compounds or the how the seawater is formed likewise and the particularly the, the ocean and land interaction in chemical interaction something like that we are going to learn in the, the chemical oceanography. Finally, we will read all these the physical oceanography geological and chemical oceanographic things with biological oceanography. That is the our main interest actually here. We are as biologists, we will be more interested in the biological oceanography. Uh, that's why we learn more about the, the animals and how we, or rather the, the ocean animals, how they interact with the ocean uh, in physical, chemical and geological way. But, uh, as you can see, this is very introduction to the oceanography. Um, we will not cover very much on the biological oceanography because in the second year and then in another, especially if you are doing special degrees, we'll more talk more about the biological aspects. So uh, this lecture series will more look at the physical, geological, chemical oceanography and then a little bit of biology as well, right? So that's how things are organized and and it, the subject actually, it's not only these disciplines, but there are so many other, like even the astronomy perhaps, right? Geography, and it's a combination of all these uh, subjects. And that's why we call this subject as a interdisciplinary subject. It's also a multidisciplinary because it's involved a lot of areas and it's interdisciplinary it means they are all depend each other, right? So we need to know biology, chemistry, physics, and geography, geology, perhaps sometimes astronomy or the, the especially the, 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 about this atmosphere, right? So it's combination, right? The main clone by when Nepal me only, yeah, like it, but we are just trying to understand the very basics, right, in, in the oceanography. Right? So, since we have discussed some of the things last week as well, so uh, I have a lot of experience in working in the marine environment, um, doing research, uh, and also I've been working a lot on the environmental impact assessment from like the existing projects as well as plan projects, like if you're going to make a new port or a harbor, we have to do an environmental, or we have to get an environmental clearance, we call EIA, right? or otherwise environmental impact assessment. Right, so get this one, we need to right, do some uh, on surveys, right? so doing this we have gain a lot of experience about the marine environment around the country. So uh, definitely I would be able to share with all, uh, not all, at least some of these things, right? Uh, which we will discuss uh, over the time, right? And in today's lecture, right? 
I'm just trying to give you an understanding or a very brief introduction. Uh, not to give too many things in the very first uh, couple of weeks, but uh, at least I'll, I'll be discussing the few things like a wise study oceanography. Uh, if you, I don't think we have time to go to the next uh, section that we are uh, the boundaries of the ocean. But uh, let's see why we should learn oceanography as a subject, right? So let me show you this. Uh, you can see the 70% of the oxygen produced in the ocean and the more than half of the carbon dioxide that produces absorbed in the ocean and that's 90% of the, the living space and 97% of the, the earth's water in the ocean and 60% of the animal protein come from the ocean and it's source of energy, right? And it's the future resource base of the lot of minerals, right? You can get a lot of minerals from the ocean, even the Andic terrestrial environment. And there are even the, we can extract a lot of <clears throat> pharmaceutical product from the ocean. And not only that, 90% of the commodities like the goods are transported in the ocean and we call the ocean as the super highway right so these are some of the things that the 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 ocean provide for us right? but that's not all right as you can see in this uh, uh, this with what we call the infographic right there's some graphic as well as information so this kind of things we call infographic, right? So it explains everything from how much the ocean contributed to the climate regulation, right? The, the weather that we experience today, it's very much controlled by the ocean. Right? You might have, you know that even the like, like uh, any, like low pressure shown in the ocean, triggering some of the, the cyclones. Likewise, a lot of things in the, the terrestrial environment so that we are experiencing, they actually uh, coming from the, or the regulated by the ocean. And even the, the air we breathe come from the ocean. And we talk about the blue carbon that, that the, the ocean store a lot of uh, carbon dioxide, uh, in form, carbon in form of carbon dioxide. Uh, we will discuss this in later. And from the shoreline protection, and the, the energy, right? This lot of energy in the ocean, if we can extract that energy, right? Even here mentioned that if we can extract 1% of the energy that we have in the ocean, right? that's more than enough to provide the power to the whole world, right? You can imagine how much power is in the ocean, but we are not really extracting this and the even the offshore wind power, so we can have wind power station. And, and also the ocean is the habitat for a lot of uh, important habitats like the, the mangroves, the seagrass beds, the coral reefs, one of the most important ecosystems in the planet, right? So these are in the, the ocean and how much food that the ocean is provide for us and how many people live on the ocean. And, and the other thing is it's transportation of goods and tourism and recreation, right? Very much the tourism is depend on the, 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 the ocean in, in particular countries like Sri Lanka, right? And the oil and gas, there are a lot of oil and gas producing in the ocean that you call the offshore oil um, platforms, right? And the income and jobs, and medicine. Likewise, there are so many things that we can get from the ocean, but uh, we talk very little about the ocean, right? On the other hand, now the scientists believe that the ocean is the most important place. Like we are talking about now that it's climate change. Climate change, Climate change got a solution that in a term who they can get them back out to their mitigation term and climate change. If you don't kiss when a Sakara no, no, you put on Hugak, they will team in who they care. So the ocean going to be a very important for everybody, 
right so that's where we need to learn about the ocean as well right so that's not the the case there are so many other things right like we talk about this alien species right you might have seen even the movies the aliens right but this term aliens are they a culprit or really make a mithya prabandhayak the himnattang hattatama tiyena deyak right just look at the ocean bottoms right these are some of the images of the animals living in the ocean you can see they are they looks very weird right so just like you can call them as aliens i right? just few images but there are lot more fish or other marine organism just look like alien right um another more important most important thing is that the as we heard or as we know the life began in the ocean jeeve patangatte api danne hitita mohu denne iten anivarayen apita hari wedagat me eken eken ape aadi hari ape aadivasi hari ape purwo iten etta aadivasi kiyen ta eka pita kohen hari mohunda tai sambandha so it's very important to know that how we descend uh, from that uh, prehistoric creatures from today's right and other very important thing is that the water cycle the carbon cycle the nutrient cycle and all the other biogeological cycles that uh, we have on our earth they all control by the ocean right the the ocean provide you all the 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 basic things for the cycles to run right? and that's why we call the ocean as our life support system right the uh, the ocean is the earth's life support system just like uh, the our heart and the lungs in our in our body right so it's the life support system right if if something wrong if something goes wrong with this life support system the whole earth is going to collapse right so that's where the the importance right so um why the ocean is that important for everybody right and even the existence of the earth right and this two images we just look at the 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 oceans in particular the coastal ecosystems and also some coral reef sea grass beds they are like the earth's lungs but these lungs usually the lungs take oxygen and exhale the carbon dioxide they inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide but these lungs they absorb carbon dioxide and right exhale oxygen so very that's the oxygen that produce that's the oxygen that will breathe right at the same time they are the like kidneys like filtering out the most toxic substances and in any other contaminants in particular the coastal ecosystem right so i don't know anyone of you have heard about a woman or the lady or a generally uh, a person all dr silvia earl ala thiyana ka hore dr silvia earl kela kene ken ane right ada me lecture ekin passe konda hoyala balanna ko right you can search in the google or anywhere about dr silvia earl right one of the uh one of the living right legendary ocean explorer such so as though she is a, a woman she has been a, a, like a lead, one of the uh, like a aquanauts doing lot of exploration in the ocean including even like working in the submersible um there are a lot of inspirational uh, talks given by her like you can search and you know i can later on i'll show you some of the her talks like as you can see with every drop of water you drink every breath you take you are connected to the ocean right so there's no exception 
right? From every drop to port and every request that you take, you are connected to the ocean, which means we all connected to the ocean. Though we are like we consider the ocean is like disconnected. Right? That's why we back a lot of people move the tongue. Back a lot of people are buying. Just like people are talking about move the tongue. Yeah, if you understand the ocean right the connection with the ocean right uh, none of us do anything harm to the ocean because that much we are connected to the ocean in many different ways right and we as sri lankans how important the ocean for us right especially since we are an island nation right we are surrounded by the ocean and then we are small island nation but we have big ocean area with lot of resources but do we really get maximum out of this ocean that's something we have to discuss in the future right um, but other than that uh, how important the ocean ash and to the us especially the the biodiversity in the ocean right you can see this beautiful images uh, uh, of the uh, of our oceans right you can see these beautiful creatures very colorful animals uh, and one of the reasons why the ocean is uh, interested for many people for like uh, underwater photography or we film making because it's the beauty the colors so much of colors in the ocean um, even then the the terrestrial environment right and and from this the, the fascinating coral reefs we call the the most stunning or most fascinating underwater landscapes right there is no any other habitat that could be colorful or diverse as a coral reefs as you can see from the, some of these images uh, they all uh, some of are my own images um, <clears throat> and from that to this uh, the coastal ecosystems particularly the lagoons estuaries right and then right, uh, which support the mangrove ecosystems very important uh, ecosystem particularly they absorb a lot of carbon and also this mangrove habitat is a habitat for a lot of uh, Level stages of uh, fish, prawns, crabs, and a lot of economically important species have it, right? And the seagrass beds, I think you might have not even seen these uh, seagrass beds, though they are very common, especially even in the lagoons. Uh, but uh, you might not have a chance to see seagrass beds where they even these dugongs, Mohudura, where they live, right? Um, this bottom image is actually I took in a, a Jaffna lagoon, where there was be beautiful uh, seagrass beds in very shallow waters even, right? right? You can't, like, you see like it's like a, a grassland when you go, when you're snorkeling in a, a seagrass bed, it's just like you are in a, a grassland. Right? Um, such a beautiful environment with a lot of uh, marine habitat marine organisms as well, right? And from that to this, the sand dunes, right? You might have seen this, all these actual images from uh, Sri Lankan uh, sand dunes. Uh, very interesting, some are in Bundala. Um, another unique ecosystem, there are unique uh, plants and animal life in the sand dunes as well, right? Um, and the other important thing is this marine life the marine mammals in particular, right? Uh, from dolphins to whales. <clears throat> um, there are more than 30 species of marine mammals just out in the ocean, right? Uh, and most importantly, right? So I don't know anyone of you ever heard about this one, right? Uh, or ever thought of this one, the Sri Lanka is, is perhaps the only the country in the world where you can see the terrestrial giant that is the elephant 
and the blue whale, the largest animal on our planet, right? Both terrestrial one and the aquatic one, they're both in uh, our waters. And um, of course, elephant is not in our water, but sometimes as you can see, they can be in the water as well. But at least within couple of hours time, you can see this both the ocean giant as well as the ter terrestrial giant. I think nowhere in the world you can see this one. And that's why the Sri Lanka has been one of the hotspot for both the, the terrestrial giant, the elephant as well as the, um, the aquatic or the ocean giant, the blue whale or the, the, the largest planet that ever we had on our planet, right? So that's something very unique uh, with our country, right? And other than that, uh, the, the opportunities that we have to get the for the recreational purposes, how much we can get out of from the ocean, right? From um, from diving to aquatic other sports, and, and diving in the shipwrecks or the uh, diving for the marine mammals, as well as for the coral reefs. Right? So it's a lot of recreational activities, um, and then wind surfing and like a kite surfing now, there's a very important uh, sport like in the, the bottom middle called the kite surfing. Now we, the Kalpiti area in Sri Lanka like is another uh, world's hotspot for the kite surfing. Very popular sports in among some of the tourists, right? Other than that, this uh, some, right? The, we talk about the good things, but the bad thing also associated with the ocean, something like this uh, tsunamis and uh, rip currents, which we will talk about. And I already talked about these things last week as well. Uh, uh, we haven't even heard about this uh, tsunami before it happened at the same time, even the rip currents. It's one of the, the most dangerous, uh, the currents that you can see even in the shallow waters, but very people know about that one because we don't learn about this one and there is no any uh, educational programs to learn or teach people about the reef current, what is it and how to avoid and right? so that's why unfortunately a lot of people get killed by the reef currents, right? Um, we'll talk about these things later on. Um, and from that, we see this all these uh, different ecosystems with uh, so much diversity of all life, uh, this ecosystem. But uh, as I discussed last week also, uh, we, do, we don't do anything good for the ocean, right? Whatever we do, they're all bad for the ocean, right? You, can, you can't name on even a single thing we do good for the ocean, right? Like, like what? With the, even with this ship accident, right? There are a lot of argument about this, but it is not the, the argument is about the, the how much the damage it caused or how much money you are going to get, but the nothing in that, uh, the containers or the, in that ship going to do anything good for the ocean. That is important, right? I mean, uh, other than that, I, I can't see anything good from that ship, right? Um, <clears throat> And the situation with the coral reefs, we, which we will talk about these things later on. Um, and um, we have very sad story about the, the coral reefs. It's not only about the Sri Lanka, but uh, all over the, the world, even the, the largest coral reef and well-managed coral reef, like the Great Barrier Reef, it's dying. Um, so, we, our oceans as well, right? So that's why we are going to learn about the ocean, right? Uh, the term ocean, right? The oceanography is actually come from a Latin terms. The oceanus is the ocean and the graphos is a description, right? 
විස්තර කරන එක තමයි මේ කියන එක තේරුම තමයි මේ ocean ඔටෙක කියන term එකේ තියෙන්නේ uh, it's more scientifically we call the the scientific study of the ocean right the the most important thing with this uh, the subject is that the is quite recent subject i am not very recent but it uh, compared to other biological subject or the physical subject like a physics but this is quite new uh, but it doesn't mean that the we have not been using the ocean that we have been using the ocean for so many years right we know that uh, the the human settlement we know that uh, the the human evolved in the africa but they had to go to different continents and they should have gone through the ocean for definitely in the, in the prehistoric time even right um, so definitely there should have been some uh, ocean voyages by even the prehistoric time and there are a lot of uh, uh, we call the refuse piles or the any remains from the marine organisms particularly from the fish in the ancient or the prehistorical uh, habitats or the villages which means that people have been using fish as a food or some sort of a, a purpose right and then the especially the sailors or the explorers the ocean, they, they have been using the ocean for quite long period of time right so the subject is not anything new but i mean not the subject is new but we have been using the ocean for many years now and then there are a lot of historical uh, background right uh, in particular the, the 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 curiosity that we had I mean scientific curiosity about the ocean right because it's the vast or gigantic uh, environment and then we know a little about the ocean and then there's a lot of curious things about the ocean that's why people uh, want to explore but other than that there are so many other important things that we want to learn about the ocean right now one would think that uh, what are we going to do with the oceanography i mean the, doing oceanography right but if you are really a oceanographer there are so many things you can be doing but uh, here you are going to learn oceanography as, as a subject but any of you going to be uh, like continuing in this field there are a lot of things you can do right especially you can be a researcher in first instance there are we though we are an island nation there are very few people or very few oceanographers we have especially on the physical oceanography the chemical oceanography we don't really have very few right just one or two people in the physical and chemical oceanography but uh, there are few biological oceanographers but uh, that those only couple of people right you see you, you can't even imagine a country uh, surrounded by the vast ocean but very few people very few scientists to work on this field right and we need lot of people to work on this like a seismology the geophysics like how the ocean, ocean bottom look like um, because you no one can see it so we have to do technology to do Oh, get some idea about the bottom right and we need lot of advanced technology like auv for the automated automatic or the autonomous underwater vehicles right but we don't have any right but uh, even some research institutes in developed nation they have this kind of things but uh, unfortunately we don't have um, and remotely operated vehicles rovs or auvs autonomous and remotely or it's two different things like these kind of thing i mean of course these are like just to know uh, some areas you can work but other than that um, as i said you can be a researcher there are a lot of research institute like uh, like nara nagda nipa c department of wildlife Like, like research institute where you'll be working on the ocean related subjects and also the uh, there is a, a cross conservation department like right, different areas where you can work on right and and also you can work in the academia just like me right uh, you can be a lecturer at the same time you can be a researcher right 
an environmental consultant. Right. There are very few marine ecologists and marine biologists to work in this uh, environment in the field of marine consulting, right? Um, so there's a lot of opportunities for people to work, right? <clears throat> so uh, I have given even this, I will share all this uh, with you later on. Hello students and welcome to Oceanography 100. I'm Al Trujillo, professor of oceanography here at Palomar College and lead author of your textbook. I want to tell you a little bit about this course. Sometimes called Oceanography, Marine Science, or simply the Oceans, this course is intended to help you in your quest to know more about the ocean. As you learn about the ocean, I hope that it elicits a sense of wonder and a spirit of curiosity about our watery planet. The ocean represents many different things to different people. To some, it is a wilderness of beauty and tranquility, a refuge from hectic civilized lives. Others see it as a vast recreational area that inspires either rest or physical challenge. To others, it is a mysterious place that is full of unknown wonders. And to others, it is a place of employment unmatched by any on land. To be sure, its splendor has inspired artists, writers, and poets for centuries. Above all, take time to admire the oceans. The scientific study of oceanography is typically divided into four main academic disciplines or subfields of study with much overlap. They are, first, geological oceanography, which is a study of the structure of the seafloor and how the seafloor has changed through time, the creation of seafloor features, and the history of sediments deposited on it. Second, chemical oceanography, which is a study of the chemical composition and properties of seawater, how to extract certain chemicals from seawater and the effects of pollutants. Third, physical oceanography, which is a study of waves, tides, and currents, the ocean-atmosphere relationship that influences weather and climate, and the transmission of light and sound in the oceans. Fourth, biological oceanography, which is a study of the various oceanic life forms and their relationships to one another, adaptations to the marine environment, and developing sustainable methods of harvesting seafood. Other disciplines include ocean engineering, marine archaeology, ocean policy, and marine education. Because the study of oceanography often examines in detail all the different disciplines of oceanography, it is frequently described as being an interdisciplinary science, or one covering all the disciplines of science as they apply to the oceans. This course includes a broad range of interdisciplinary science topics that comprises the field of oceanography. In essence, this is a course about all aspects of the oceans. Lastly, the content of this course was carefully developed to provide a foundation in science by examining the vast body of oceanic knowledge in an educational and sometimes entertaining way. My desire is that you will take away from this course much more than just a collection of facts. Instead, I'd like you to develop a fundamental understanding of how the oceans work really why the oceans behave the way they do. In the end, I hope that understanding the way the oceans work will foster an appreciation of the marine environment and a desire to help preserve it. I hope you enjoy this course. Howdy. Um... I just show that uh, video because uh, he is one of the authors uh, in the in the one of the textbook in the oceanography as well as a, a um, researcher in the oceanography was also a teacher. Um, I I just want to show you that uh, what you are what you are going to learn in this uh, lecture series as well, right? So never underestimate, right? We have gone to what the, the world's elsewhere is teaching, how they are teaching, what is teaching in the, the best universities in the world, right? We are getting some insight or we're getting some ideas from, from them, like how they are teaching and we are also adapting that same things or not the same thing, but please be 
the best thing that we can use them in for our purposes as well. Right? That's why I'm so, so I hope you can get a, a, I mean, sort of a maximum out of this course uh, on that particular subject, right? Um, just to give another few things, uh, since we are almost running out of the time for the today's, um, there are a few textbooks, unfortunately, um, you won't be able to see them. There, this first book, uh, The Oceanography by the Gross, um, this is available in the library, um, but uh, How the Ocean Works, this is another book, uh, um, uh, but it's not in the library, but I have a copy as well as, but this oceanography also, there's a, a copy in the, the library and marine biology by 